I'm here with two-time Olympian Jason McCartney from Iowa. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, for someone that doesn't know you, who is, by your own definition, Jason McCartney? Oh, uh, just, you know, I'm an avid, avid cyclist and love to ride, and that's kind of how I made it to where I made it. So you just started, you're at the simple level of you love biking. Yep. Um, started off, you know, I got a road bike and went out in the country and around these roads here and was scared to get lost. I, I went with a group and then had to stay with them, otherwise I would be lost because I was new to the area. So, and then I was hooked. The speed, the sounds, the sights, it was great. So yeah, that's great. Like I love the idea of having all the senses because you're yeah. really you're an outdoors guy. Yeah. And so biking really fit with what your spirit was about. Yep. Yeah. Just and it's an amazing way to explore the country and see things that that you wouldn't normally see. Like say if you're a runner, you you just can't make it those type of distances. So it's just a great exploratory device. So did you get discovered in a shoe store? Tell me this shoe store story. Um, like how does this go? There's a race that's pretty famous in Iowa, and it was a Snake Alley Criterium, and it goes up one of the crookedest streets in the country, or the world, I guess they say. And so I worked at the shoe store that was on the course, and, and we'd see them come by and crash. At that time, the course was set up, so there was a downhill corner, and there was a lot of crashing, which I guess that's what people like to see when there's biking, but I ended up going back and competing in that event, and, and it's in the, in the town that I lived in, in Burlington, and so won it quite a few times, and just had a great, great experience there. So you're, so you're in this shoe store. I'm trying to understand for kids maybe that are um, getting started today. How do you figure out, like what's the moment where you go from just biking yep. to two-time Olympian? Like what, is there a moment, you know, like you love it. What's the steps? Take me through. Yeah, I think it's all, with anything, it's just baby steps. So for me, it was getting an actual race bike because I always just had you know, mountain bikes. I was kind of a skateboarder and did other things, but, you know, and then I had some mountain bikes. But then I moved up to Iowa City and got a job up here at a bike shop with Ken Leffler and started, uh, got into racing. And went on, it's, it didn't start with racing. At first it started with the group ride and getting the skills that you need to actually race. And I think that's the thing, like, don't jump into something right away until maybe you've kind of developed your skill set a little bit. So that's what I did, and that was going on the group rides and, and learning about echelons and pacing and attacking and just all the different things that go with racing. And so. here's the thing, it's like, as Americans, we have biking in our consciousness. Like, it's something we know, you yeah. know? You learn to ride a bike. But there's more to it, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of technique going on. There's a lot of things that you guys are doing. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, it all, it changes each level you go to, you know, you're an amateur racer and you're just going to criteriums and then it changes on, on up to when you're a professional like I was able to be and... Don't forget yeah, the, my level. What about <laughs> when you like with the iPod and the, at the sunset? That's a level too, right? Right, that's right. No, level. no. In, Don't in forget my level. <laughs> that's, that's the thing, like, I wouldn't really even say that I'm an athlete. I just love to ride my bike and be outside. And so that, for me, is like I've always said, as, as long as I could ride my bike to work, I'd be happier just ride my bike. So it's kind of wherever you're at, as long as you're having fun, that's the main thing. So enjoy what you do. Yeah, I can safely say that you're an athlete. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you some questions about what is it that you eat because we're all trying to get in shape. And so maybe we could take a little bit of what you do. What do you eat? Do you eat well? Do you eat a lot? Yeah, it's, um, that's a good question because for me in my career, like I'd stopped cycling for a while as far as racing and then came back to it. And I'd worked in a kitchen a little bit and they used, you know, fresh ingredients and that kind of changed my, you know, what we eat. We didn't eat a lot of fried food and, and stuff like that. So it became more part of our consciousness to eat eat healthy and fruits and vegetables and and then you get to the upper levels and then all of a sudden your team is like well you need to lose x amount of weight and you're like there's no you way i can do weight. that yeah well this is for cycling it's okay. yeah you guys it's are pretty, it's pretty, you are uh, tiny you are tiny and they the team team guys would come in with calipers and test you every wow. you know every week so it gets pretty serious and then they're like disappointed your body fat's too high but they better, not come to my, they better not come to my house with that thing because they're going to be really yeah. disappointed. <laughs> it's more about like staying consistent. And, and then what happens is you start eating that way and you end up liking it salads and 
and the other foods don't even taste good to you anymore. And that's kind of where I'm at. No, the salads do taste good. Yeah, right? no, they're great. They're, okay, yeah, good. that's the like the fried foods and stuff like that. When you eat them, it makes your body because you're running such a clean system that it seems it messes you up a little bit. So it's good to do in the off season. Yeah. So if somebody is looking at you and the next generation and coming into the sport or just coming into trying the sport. Yeah. What would you say at this time to that young person? Uh, I think it's a great time for uh, young athletes to get in the sport because there's a lot of programs now that they didn't have in the 80s and 90s for there's these U23 programs. So now they're recognizing that, hey, we need to look at athletes at their age group and then help them develop. And so there's all these development programs. So now you can be, but back in the day, you had to race with, you know, basically grown men and then they don't really care about you. So then you're not getting hired on these pro teams. But now there's all these systems in place where it's a great time for, for young athletes. You know, there's, they can get recognized nationally from mm -hmm. the national federations, which will then take them to international competitions, which will give them the experience to go to the Olympics, go to the world championships and really, uh, you know, develop. Thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Yep. And did you have fun, kind of, sort of? Oh, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> exactly. And so now, stay with us. As we learn a little about biking endurance from spinning class.